All right, so when you look at number four, okay, love of all things holy. On which one? How many number fours are there? On the test. <laughs> On the test. All right. Okay. Object hits a block of wood. What's Newton's third law? Every force there is an equal and opposite force. Okay? There was nothing to think about on that question. Boom. The forces, equal and opposite. Boom. Changes in momentum. Guess what? Equal and opposite. The accelerations aren't because the masses are different. Okay? There should have been no thought whatsoever. Boom. Okay? Nothing to think about. Forces equal and opposite. Changes in momentum equal and opposite. Boom. And then there's number 13. You spin slower with your arms extended because moment of inertia is smaller. So right away, when you get to that point, why is that false? Because it would be bigger. Yeah, because you've got your arms out, the moment of inertia is bigger, and then to make it even more jacked up, I say the angular velocity must increase. You can't spin slower and make your angular velocity increase. No. It's like saying fighting for peace. No. It won't work. Um, <laughs> so sarcastic on your comedy. <laughs> really? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I am. You literally said nice exclamation mark <laughs> as I missed it. <laughs> yeah, because you missed it big. <laughs> Look at this. Just read that and just, I can picture him saying that. Okay. So, on the factors that will affect angular acceleration. Look. <laughs> torque equals two things. It equals... Force times radius, it also equals I alpha. Oh, and with, hidden within alpha is the general idea of MR squared, right? Torque, force, radius. So when you look at this idea that, oh, what are the factors will affect the angular acceleration? Okay, we got the force applied. Hey, more force, more angular acceleration. The distribution of the mass, because that's going to affect your moment of inertia. The location of the applied force, are you applying it close to the center or are you applying it further out? Which is going to affect the amount of torque that you apply. So that's why that answer is F. Yeah. And then there's 17, okay? We talked about this. You did the calculations. When something hits and bounces back, that's the greatest change in momentum because you have to stop and you have to project it back in the opposite direction. So C can't even be right. The rubber bowl will undergo a greater change in momentum than the block that it strikes. Why cannot? Why can C not be true? Be equal. Yeah, you have violated the law of conservation of momentum. Don't <laughs> Okay. Uh, And then there is 25. Okay? Well, I, if nothing else, okay, number one, I told you 25 was going to be on it. There was a problem on the review just like it. We worked the problem in class. I said, make sure that you can do this. Okay, here nor there. So, but here, here's what drove me nuts, is that there were some of you that on D, when you're talking about the force, you got a negative value. Okay? Down is defined as negative. So, when this hits the table, right, or the floor, you're saying I'm going, the force acting on it is going to be negative. So you're going to make this thing bounce up in the air by pushing it into the floor. No, bad. No. But here, then here's where the dichotomy occurs. Then if you had that, you had your velocity time graph that looks like this. This is when it's in contact with the floor. There's a positive slope. The only way that you can generate a positive slope is if you have a positive acceleration, which means you have a positive force. So you can't be sitting there going, oh, I'm going to exert a negative force and then come over here and just, oh, well, I'll just not worry about the negative side. Not a big deal. And then I'll just draw this graph. It has to fit together. If you just, if you end up with a negative acceleration and you look at that going, ooh, that's bad. Just don't erase it and then go, well, I'll just act like it's not there. Okay? 
is this isn't that like the national debt where you just act like we're not twenty trillion dollars in debt as a nation and just ignore it. No, this is physics. This is reality. You have to, you just can't wish it upon yourself. So what did the graph supposed to look like? This. Oh, so this is. But the whole point being is that you have a positive acceleration in here. The only way you can have a positive acceleration is if you have a positive force. Right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Thanks. Um, anyway, and then there was the bug problem, you know? But that was so hard. I gave you the moment of inertia. I gave I don't know you the value of radians per second. At least find the initial angular momentum of the bug. All you had to do is take the moment of inertia times eight radians per second. Literally, that That's got it. you one point. That's it. That's all I had to do. But I did that. So I got one point. Yeah. Go. That was a Go you. Okay. Cool. Anyway. All right. Give me the test back. That one took the test. So here's what we have left. Oh, uh, this is the last, second of the kind of last big unit on this idea of work and energy. Uh, well, obviously, by the name implies, start with the word work. We'll talk about that today. Then uh, we'll roll that into energy, conservation of energy. Uh, there's going to be like a medium sized test, which will be a week from Monday, that Monday before Thanksgiving break. Because I don't want to, I want to have that assessment come before you can get everything over Thanksgiving break, and then we'll pick that back up and probably have a busy one then afterwards. Are you done? Yeah. All right. So when you talk about work, so work has a unique definition when it comes to physics, and there's two aspects that you have to keep in mind with work. The simple definition of work, and it's nothing complicated, is force times displacement. Okay? Now, when you talk about this displacement, this is the distance through which the force acts. So there's two things that have to happen for you to do work. You have to exert a force, and something has to move in the direction of that force, okay? So like, if I just hold up this golf ball, I'm exerting a force, okay? Got half of the equation, but I'm not moving it. So if I'm exerting a force and it's not moving in that direction, I'm not doing any work. Now, if I take this golf ball and I lift it up, I do work. If I lower the golf ball down, I do work, okay? If I take it from rest and speed it up, I do work, okay? So there has to be two things. There has to be a force, and you have to be moving in the direction of that force. So if you look at the units, force obviously is going to be nation in what? Newtons, okay? And then you've got the distance, which is going to be, have to be in meters, meters okay? So, one way to look at work is that it's Newton meters. Now, the other side of this is that you'll see, especially on Monday, that work is equivalent to a change in energy. Well, all forms of energy, whether you're in a chemistry class or physics class, doesn't make any difference. All forms of energy are measured in what units? Joules. Joules. <laughs> okay? Joules. This isn't, and this isn't the kind that you buy at Zales, okay? So, this was named after a guy by the name of Prescott Jewell. He was very popular in high school, he was owned a brewery in England, okay? No, true story. I'm not making <laughs> That's crazy. No, oh, it's, it's, it's a true story. So, uh, he was the first one to do an analysis of the relationship between potential energy in a mechanical system, and thermal energy. So what he did is that, it was pretty clever what he set up. He set up like a, 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 there was a rod in here with baffles, kind of like what you would use to make homemade ice cream, okay, if you've ever seen that, where it would turn. And so then over here, and this is very, very well insulated, okay, and then over here he would drop a weight, okay, and as the weight would fall, 
it would make the system inside turn. And there was water inside of here. So what he did is that he measured the initial temperature of the water, then he would let this weight fall, and then he would measure the final temperature of the water. Now, it was a very subtle change in temperature, but the temperature went up, which is why, you know, let's say, for example, you've got the Yeti cooler, right? And so Sam has a Yeti cooler, and Lane has a Yeti cooler, both filled with ice, same temperature, everything. But Sam sits there and goes, oh, I'm a little bit nervous, and he starts shaking that Yeti cooler, okay? It's going like this, right? And Lane's chilling out going, I should let mine sit there. So which one is going to melt faster? Sam's is, right? You're because shaking, it's because it has more kinetic energy, right? So therefore, with more kinetic energy, there's more vibrations, there's more friction. Sam's is going to melt a lot faster than Lane's. So the plane is just like sitting there. A gigantic golf ball, and you're holding it. You're not doing any work, even though you're like straining to hold it up. You mean like Hank? Well, no, because the displacement is zero. Yeah, so if I'm just doing this. But you're doing some type in your muscles or something, there has to be some type of work going on. You, 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 talk, you focus on. So we're just measured in joules, correct? Yes. Is that what energy is also measured in? Yes. So you're using no energy when you're just sitting there? No. No, you, no, you have to look. No, 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 don't confuse using energy with work. Okay? Okay. Big difference. When you're talking about work, you focus on. What is doing the work and in which direction? So right now, like if I lift it up, okay, I'm increasing the potential energy. I'm doing work by lifting it. Now, gravity is trying to pull it down. So if the work is done in the opposite direction of motion, so if you think of gravity, gravity is kind of like friction, because if I go to lift it up, I have to overcome the gravitational pull. So gravity's work is negative because it's in the opposite direction of motion. So how we've decided to define this thing is if the work is done in the direction of motion or you lift something up, it's positive work. If you lower it back down or if it's in the opposite direction of motion, it's defined as negative. So when I let go of this thing, right, gravity is doing positive work because of the fact that the force of gravity is acting in the direction of motion. Okay? Okay, so if you like did one rep and it comes back to the exact same place, technically you've done no work? The sum total would be zero, yes. But, gen but what, what you're looking at, you generally don't talk about the sums of work. You look at work in each individual segment. Okay. So, anyway, so Prescott was the first one to come up with this relationship between mechanical energy and thermal energy. And everybody said, oh, hey, that's kind of cool. And then, like, let's say, for example, we'll eventually, don't worry about the fact that I happen to have a syringe in my drawer. I use it for demos only. And so, <laughs> so, that kind of demo. yeah. So let's say that I, I seal up one end and I push it, okay? Am I doing work? Yeah, yeah, I'm exerting a force through a distance. If I seal up one end and pull it, I do work. Yeah. I'm exerting a force through a distance. So there's two things that have to happen. You have to have a force, and it has to move in the direction of that force. So let's look at something simple. So I'm going to take a wooden block that I'm going to pull across and we'll measure how much force it takes to pull it. Yeah. Let's that. Give that a pull. Oh, yeah. it takes about 0 0.70 newtons of force. Yeah, that's such a steady hand. Yeah, just a constant velocity. Could have been a surgeon. Could have been with blood. All right. So what are the forces acting on the block? Gravity. Okay. Friction. Which is, that's about two newtons. Okay. We got friction acting which direction? Let's assume it's going this way. Yeah. So friction's going this way. Right? And then I've got my fat, fat, and then I've got my normal force. Now, in this situation, 
got gravity acting, I've got normal acting. I'm, am I going to consider either one of those forces in my work calculation? Ellie, you shake your head no. Why? Beautiful. Okay. These forces are here. They're important. Okay. Kind of cool to have gravity. Normal is kind of important, otherwise it accelerates towards the center of the Earth. Okay. Uh, I got my FAP, which we said was 0 0.70 newtons. So if I'm pulling it at a constant velocity, what's my frictional force? Don't make this Seven. difficult. If you're pulling it at a constant <laughs> velocity, it's a negative force. Is the same. Ah, negative 0.7. Okay. So here's the deal. So let's say that I pull this thing one meter. So if you look at the work that I do, okay, this is all about the work that I'm going to do. I'm going to apply a force of 0.7 newtons over a distance of one meter. And I'm going to take 0 0.70 newtons times one meter, and I'm going to get 0 0.70 joules. Okay? That's work that I did. Now, what if, what if it is in, what if it ever gets cold? Okay, since it hasn't been lately. But well, let's say it does get a little bit cold, right? Yeah. And you're standing outside waiting on a ride, and uh, your hands are cold and you've lost your mittens. What are you going to do? I'm going to apply some force to my hands. You maybe do this, right? Now, when you do this, are you doing work? Yeah. yeah. Your hands are moving. Um, are you moving? So, yes. Are you exerting a force through a distance? Yes. Yes. Now, when you do that, what do you create? Thermal energy. Thermal energy. Now, when I drag this block, do I create thermal energy? Yeah. Yeah. I, now, I don't have to worry about pulling up the block and know it's on fire, okay, or it's starting to smoke, okay? This little bit isn't going to create that much thermal energy. But if you've ever watched any of the survival shows, okay, and they need to start a fire, what do they do? They a stick and they go. Yeah. Okay. So, or they do something. They exert a force through a distance to create thermal energy. Which, if you do that enough, you can start a fire. But this little bit isn't enough. Okay? It's not enough. But there is going to be a little bit of thermal energy generated. So if you look at the work done in overcoming friction, okay? Simple idea. The work done in overcoming friction, that's negative 0.7 newtons. I multiply that by 1, I get negative 0.70 joules. So what the negative 0 0.70 joules represents is the work that I have done in overcoming friction. And that's how much heat's going to be generated. Now, what if that was the magic frictionless block? Magic frictionless block. I give it a push. Once I let go of it, do I have to continue to do work? No. 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 Why not? Because there's no, there's no friction. Yeah, I don't force. have to keep applying the force. Gravity and normal are still there, it but accelerate, the, the, I'm just saying, this is after I let go of it. After I give it that initial push, it's already moving, no work's going to be done on it. Okay? Got that. Now, what if I take this and I pull it like this? Am I doing work? Kind of. Oh, because it's not. Yes. It's not in the same direction, so is it? I don't know. Well, you're the teacher, so you probably <laughs> should. <laughs> okay. So, here's the deal. What's the only force that I consider? The force in the direction of? The object's moving. Yes. So, which direction is the object moving? This way. Flat, right? So, the only force that I consider is the force that's acting in that direction. Mm. So if I know the tension and I know the angle, what can I find? Oh, no, it's not. Look. So here's the tension, right? You know a certain angle. What's, what, which of these values are you going to use to calculate work? The, the vertical component or the horizontal component? Mm -hmm. Sam? 
Horizontal? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's only fx that's in the direction of motion. Okay. Fx. What's fx? Fx. Special effects. Force in the x direction. Yeah. What a dude. What's fx? Yeah, what a dude. Oh, darn. <laughs> yeah, you don't either. Okay. <laughs> Trust me, you don't either. Okay. <laughs> You're going to know why. Where's my rubber stopper? I need my rubber stopper. What? Why do you just assume it's always me? Because you're the only one that touches the stuff that I have. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird how you don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm dead. Really? What? You just bit the stopper. Hey, they I know me. you have my glasses. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. You <laughs> think you didn't know that? I also have your golf ball. <laughs> That's actually my syringe. <laughs> You're a plunger. How is that a plunger? There's the plunger as part of the syringe. <laughs> That's it. I was gonna sue you. My patient. Can I see the stopper? I don't know where to find it. Because it's lost. Can I see the stopper? Okay. Now. Yeah, you don't even. You're like, did he steal it? Again? Okay. Yeah, you. Are. <laughs> You're like, did you steal my glasses? <laughs> I looked at the golf. All right. So at this point, am I doing work on the rubber stopper? Yep. Yes. No. No. It's not in the right direction. No, no, no. Nothing is. Why aren't you? I mean, it's going in a distance. The and it's got some force to it. No, he's not doing that though. It's he's going forward. Okay. Yes, Once I get it up to speed. Okay, so here's the rubber stopper going this way. What's the direction of the force acting on the rubber stopper? Edward. Is it moving in the direction of the centripetal force? No. No. So am I doing any work? No. No. Now, initially I had to do some work to get it to move. I had to exert a force through a distance to get it up to speed. But once I got it up to speed and it started to move, then I'm not doing any work. Now, what if I put the block on top of my head and I walk like this? Okay? It's just the weirdest scenario. So here's the question. When I'm walking at a constant speed, am I doing work on the block? No. No. What you do? Yes. Yeah, 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 you are. You are definitely doing work on the block. Why? Because you're moving and it's moving in the same direction as you. But the force is up, isn't it? Yeah, but what's the force? Once I got it moving, what's the force acting on the block? Your head. Friction. Force now normal. to get it to move. Yeah, if there's not friction, when I start to walk, the block's just going to stay there and then it's going to fall. Force normal. Yeah. But what's so we've got the normal force acting up provided Gravity, by the top of my head. Force. Gravity's pulling down, right? But once I get it to move, I'm not doing any work. Because the motion is this way, but the force that I'm exerting is up. So you're not moving So there can't be negative value of work? Oh there can be. If I take this block and I lower it down, I do negative work. Okay. But if like say this calculator is coming towards me. I gotta. Okay. <laughs> so you would be exerting a force in the opposite direction of motion. Okay. So, there's so if the force is in the opposite direction of motion, you do negative work. And later on, you'll see that why we do that because if you do work in the opposite direction of motion, you're decreasing the kinetic energy. So you have a negative change in kinetic energy, and so that's why it's negative. Okay. Good with this. Good so far. Okay. Now, 
Let's say that uh, eventually you're going to move out of your mom and dad's basement. Nope. I said eventually. I'm optimistic. Okay. I honestly and, uh, am starting to think that that is not the life for me. Let's say that you're going to move off to college and uh, you're going to move a refrigerator that has a mass of 10 children. Okay? That's the refrigerator. There's a truck right there. That's the truck. I thought that was a kitchen. I thought that was a table and there's there. Okay. The bed of the truck is one meter tall. Okay? All right. The bed of the truck is one meter tall. So, I'm going to take this refrigerator and I'm going to lift it up and set it in the bed of the truck. So me, am I going to do work on the refrigerator? So you're lifting it up? I'm lifting it up to a height of one meter. Um, you're moving at a distance and applying the force, so yes? Yes. How much work do I do? Uh, how much force are you applying? Well, the mass is 10 kilograms. Okay, so... Uh, 10 joules? 10 joules? No. no. Bad. No. Eight no. First, why is that no. bad to say that I did 10 joules? You say that one more time. Boy. Oh, yeah. You did 10 times 9.4. Yeah. Because it isn't mass times distance. It's yeah. So if this is 10 kilograms, I multiply that by 9.8, I get 98 joules. So, 98 newtons times 1 gives me 98 joules of work. Okay? So I get it up there, boom, I do 98 joules of work. If I lower it down, I'm going to do negative 98 joules of work because I'm in the, I'm moving, in, I'm decreasing that potential energy. Okay? So, if you're moving it, stop. You're moving it down. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, why is that negative? Okay. Because you'll see the other side of this is that the other side is that work equals change. Stop! <laughs> God! I'm just pursuing my freaking... Don't! So, here's the deal. By definition, if you're increasing the potential energy, meaning that you're going to lift it up, oh, okay. work is positive. If you're decreasing that potential energy, it's negative. Yeah, I get it. Right. Okay. All right. So let's say you go, wow, okay, that seems like a lot of work. Huh. What else could I do? Well, let's say that you happen to have the magic frictionless two-meter long ramp that forms a 30-degree angle. So you go, wow, I have a magic frictionless ramp. I think perhaps I will use that. Okay? So, if you go with this route, are you going to do less work, more work, or the same amount of work? Less work? Or is it the same height, so it'll end up being the same? The height in which you have to... I'm saying... I'm saying less. You're saying less. I'm frictionless? Saying frictionless? You just frictionless. have to get it moving. And then it'll go up there. So I just have wait, to... Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, so gravity doesn't exist? Yeah, I forgot about gravity. It's scared. Frickin'. I'm thinking it's... Yeah. You're going to have to have a pot like a gravity. You just keep on going. I, think you I just keep on going. Okay, so first of all, you're going to have to find the force parallel, and then it's going to have to offset that, so it's going to be like that equal. Okay, so here's the question. And then you time it. What force do I have to overcome to push the fridge up the ramps? Whatever force parallel. Force parallel. parallel. You're not allowed to handle So what you're going to see Why? is that a lot of the stuff we've studied is going to get rolled back into kind of a big cohesive idea. So here's the deal. So I got force parallel. How do you calculate force parallel? FG cosine theta. Oh, sine. Sine. Are you? Sine theta. FG sine right? theta. Wow. So if I take 98 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees, I get 49 newtons. How did you know that? Wait. Because the sine of 30 is 0.5. That's true. You are in uh, pre-calc then. 
I was. It's okay. But I, didn't, I don't know. Oh, so you don't remember. Yeah, so I didn't pay attention in class. Point five, five times nine. The sign of 40. What's the sign of 40? The sign of 40 is just easy to remember, guys. It's point five. The sign of 45. Is so that's why you just always two use over 30. Two. Yeah. Okay. No, it's not. That's reasonable. The sign of 45. It is yeah. 2 over 2. No, it is not. Yes, yeah, it, it is, dude. Okay. Just Ready? Just Ready? Yes, it is. Yeah, actually, I know it's root 2 over 2. I do remember that. <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. I'm going to apply this force of 49 newtons. Okay? So I am going to apply less force. Good with this. Okay, I am going to apply less force here. But I have to apply that force over a bigger distance, longer distance. So now instead of taking 98 newtons times 1 meter, now I'm going to take 49 newtons times 2 meters. Which oddly enough gets me. No way. 98. What the heck? So I did the exact same amount of work. Okay? So then why would people do that? Maybe because less strain on your no, back. Okay, let's say you can exert 98 newtons of force, but I can exert 49 newtons of force. So uh, I don't have friction okay. okay. Now, what if you made the ramp even longer? Then you gotta apply. It doesn't matter. It's always gonna be the same. A longer yeah. distance. It's still gonna be a smaller and smaller force, Just but you're gonna exert it over a longer, larger, period, larger, and larger period. distance. Now, but the whole key to this, this is assuming that it's frictionless. In reality, if there is friction, this 49 newtons is like a minimum. In reality, this might be, I don't know, maybe 60 newtons if there's some friction on it. So if you actually use the ramp, it's actually more work to use the ramp than it is to lift it up. But you still have the advantage that 60 newtons is still less than 98 newtons. So the advantage of the ramp is that you're still hopefully exerting less force, but your trade-off is distance. Now, here's one thing we have not talked about is time. So don't sit in and go, well, that'll take more time. Time is, an, time is not a consideration when you're talking about work. There's only two things. There's force and there is, and that's it. Now, let's say that we want to look at this on a graph. So let's say you have a force-distance graph. Yeah, so let's say if you look at what I just did pulling this, I exerted a force of 0.7 newtons over a distance of 1 meter. So what does the area on a force distance graph get you? Work. Okay? Now, what if it's a four, what if it's a force time graph? I exert 0.7 newtons over a time of one second. So if it's a force distance, it's work. If it's a force time, it's momentum. momentum. <coughs> yeah. It's going to be changing momentum. Okay? So depending upon which graph that you have, you can have two different situations. But look at this, and both of them should intuitively make sense. If I exert the same force over a longer distance, what's going to happen to the amount of work that I do? It's going to go up. Okay? Now, let's say, just think about this for a second. Um, I got a cart, right? And on one system, and then over here I've got another cart, right? Yes. Okay, with another system. And this one has a mass on top of it. Okay? So, I'm going to, and I have the same weights suspended from here. So, same parts, both frictionless, this has a big mass on top of it. Okay? What's going to create the force acting on the system? Gravity. Gravity. Pulling down on this, right? So, if this one has a much bigger mass, Okay? So if I let them travel the same distance with the same force applied, which one has more work done on it? They're the same. They're the same because of the fact that I'm going to end up with the same force acting over the same distance. So mass is irrelevant. Isn't that, man? No. Well, it's not necessarily relevant, 
But which one's going to be traveling faster? The bottom, or without the weight. Yeah, big so. If this one's going to be traveling faster, so it's going to have more kinetic energy okay. than this one does. Right. So if you let the same force act over the same distance, it's the same amount of work. Okay? But if you act, if you let the same force act over the same amount of time, then it's the same change in momentum. Okay? So there's a big difference between the two of them. Okay. Uh, that's about it. So shut that down. <laughs> Gonna waste that awesome sticker. Yeah, yeah, sticker. No. This is a good cause. <laughs> sure those, is. Those stickers are cool. Man. Man. We shouldn't, shouldn't be wasting this. No. <laughs> What's a good yeah. use of a sticker? Put, I don't put know. it on my notebook. Do that. Okay. Fine. I want one on my notebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a scientist. I'm a scientist. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. This, this is proof. Yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> so when you look at energy being conserved within a closed system, which basically means you don't worry about friction. So this is the full meal deal. Now, in the spring, we're going to actually add to this, which is UI, which is electrical potential energy. So like if you take two electrons that don't like each other and you push them together and you do work and you store energy and you let go of them and they go, they go flying apart. So here's... When you get into a conservation of energy problem, if nothing else, start at the beginning and go, okay, what kind of energy could I potentially have? So you're always going to have two forms of potential energy, UG or US. UG is gravitational, US is energy stored in the spring. We'll get into spring next week. Translational kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy. So basically, it's the same idea as momentum, but now we're going to look at energies. So basically what this means is that when you find the sum of the energies at any point, as long as it's a closed system, the only thing you can do is you can change the form of it. That's it. That's the only thing you can do is change the form. So if you're not sure what to do, write out all of these. Now, a lot of these, they might go to zero. Okay, we haven't studied springs yet. Okay. We don't have to worry about us for now, okay? We have, well, there might be some rotational energy, okay? But for the most part, we're not gonna have to worry about that. So what we're gonna focus on today is just two of them, UG and KT. So here's how this plays out. It's fairly simple, as long as you just keep one grand idea in mind. So let's say that I take uh, Hank, the uh, bowling ball, right? And let's say that Hank has a mass of 10 kilograms, and I'm going to hold Hank up here, right? Now, at the same time, I got Hank, and then I've got the bowling ball, excuse me, the golf ball. So I've got Hank and the golf ball. Sounds like the name of the band. Let's give it up for Hank and the golf ball. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> golf balls, plural. Well, I only have one, so let's go with golf balls. We should give the golf ball a name. Yeah, what do you name it? Gary? Timmy? Okay. Gary, Gary the golf ball. Gary the golf ball. Hank and Gary. Hank and Gary. Okay, I can live with Hank and Gary. Alright. Jerry or Gary? Like, how does it spell? Gary. So, there's Gary. And there's Hank. Okay? Now, let's say, for the sake of argument, that I'm going to lift them up to a height of 4.9 meters, which is actually about twice as high as the ceiling. Okay? I'm going to lift them both up to a height of 4.9 meters. <laughs> and let's say that the mass of Hank is 10 kilograms, and Gary's is 0.1 kilograms. Right? So if you do the math, when you let go of them, they're both going to accelerate, right? And at this point, from the height of 4.9 meters, if you do the math, you'll see that this is, they fall for exactly one second, okay? Fall for exactly one second. So if they fall for exactly one second, that means at both of them, at the point of impact, they're going to be going 9.8 meters per second, okay? So, let's look at this 
on a momentum time graph. Okay, so there's another type of graph that we can look at. So to make it easy, let's just make this positive. You can make it negative, let's just make it positive. It's a Friday, don't feel like jacking with negatives. So my momentum time graph, right? So Hank has a mass of 10 kilograms. And when Hank lands, he's going to be going 9.8 meters per second. So is Hank going to have some momentum when he lands? Yes. Yeah, right? So at the end of one second, how much momentum is, tank, is Hank going to have? 98 Newton seconds, mm -hmm. right? So here's 98 Newton seconds. Here's one second. So initially, Hank didn't have any momentum, right? So I'm going to draw a line like this. So this is Hank, right? Now, when Gary lands, is Gary going to be going 9.8 meters per second? Yes. But is Gary going to have as much momentum? No. no. Okay. How much momentum is Gary going to have? 0 0.98. 0 0.98. So he's going to have a lot less momentum. Okay. So Gary's out here at 0.98. Hank's up here at 98 newton seconds. Could you find the slope of Hank's line? Yes. 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 So, what's the slope of Hank's line? Do not make this difficult. Newtons? So, this is 98 Newton seconds. You're over here at one second. So, what's the slope of this line? 98 Newtons. Okay. Wow, that's kind of cool. Star Trek. So, what is the night? <laughs> oh, believe me, you have no idea. If I could. <laughs> okay, Captain Spock. What does 98 Newtons represent? I'm sorry, I was not paying any attention at all. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm going to kick you off the bridge. <laughs> okay, be, uh, Spock was just the guy who went down and he's a scientist to survey the planets. So yeah, so he kind of knew momentum, I'm guessing. Maybe. He was a biologist. Though. No, he wasn't! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't insult him. <laughs> so... He insulted something about you, a psychologist. So, Luke, my... Hi. What do you think the 98 newtons represents? Um, yeah, so the slope of a momentum time graph gives you the amount of force that's being applied, right? So as it's being dropped, your momentum is changing because the net force acting on it is 98. Your momentum is changing as a function of time. Now, when you get down here to Hank, Hank's line is his slope is 0.98 newtons. So his slope is much more shallow because with Gary, you don't have near as much force. So at the end of one second, you don't have near as much momentum. So they're both going to land with the same velocity, but they're not going to have the same momentum. Now, what if you have a horizontal line on a momentum time graph? No velocity is constant. There's just no change in your velocity. Okay? So if you have something moving at a constant velocity and you just push it, okay, it's just going to move at a constant velocity and because there's no imbalanced force acting on it. Okay? Now, here's the one dichotomy of work. Okay? So when you look at work, like for example, I take Hank and I lift him up and I store this potential energy, which is going to talk about in just a second. Okay? Or if I catch Hank, I slow him down and I change his kinetic energy. So the dichotomy of work is that you can do work and have something moving at a constant velocity 
and there's no change in kinetic energy. Or you can do work and you can change the kinetic energy. So here's what I want you to be careful of. Just because work is done on an object doesn't necessarily mean that you're changing the kinetic energy. Okay? Yes? But kinetic changing kinetic energy means work. It does. But just because work is done, if you're at a constant velocity, it doesn't mean the kinetic energy is changing. That's why I said you have to be careful about that concept of work. Okay? So work can be done to move something at a constant velocity as long as there's friction. But, if, but as soon as I stop applying that force, then the kinetic energy changes because then it's going to start to slow down. So that's just what I want you to be careful of because sometimes everybody goes, oh, work's going to be done and there's always going to be a change in kinetic energy. There could be, but there doesn't have to be if you're pushing it at a constant velocity. Okay, so be careful with that. All right, so let's look at this in terms of Gary. All right, actually, let's do with Hank. Let's, no, let's go with Gary. It's a Friday. I don't feel like lifting Hank up that hard. Okay, so here's Gary, right? And uh, Gary has a mass of 0 0.10 kilograms, and uh, I have lifted Gary up to a height of 4.9. Ah, let's make it simple. Let's just go two meters. That's something I can do. And 4.9 meters would be a bit much. Let's just go with two. So I got Gary here, two meters. Okay. So when in doubt, okay, when in doubt, draw a chart that lists all the types of potential energy and kinetic energy. So for now, we're only going to deal with two. Potential energy of UG created by gravity and kinetic energy just by fault. So here's the center. Say, okay, here's UG, here's KT, here's the sum. Okay? So when I'm up here, Gary's mass is 0.1 kilogram, therefore, 0.1 kilograms times my height of 2 meters times g gets me what? 2 meters times 0.1 times 9.8 gets me how about 1.96? Uh, I like that. Like that? It's a good number. It is, 1.96. I like that. Okay. 1.96 joules. So what's the only type of energy that I have? Potential. 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 <coughs> so that means this number in here is going to be 1.96 joules. How much kinetic energy do I have? Zero. Zero. So when I add all these together, I get 1.96 joules. Now, as soon as I know this number, now I know that everything has to always add up to 1.96. If I lift it into 4.9 meters, this would be a bigger number. So don't think, oh, 1.96 is the constant for every type of problem. 1.96 is just this constant. If I had lifted Hank to about to a height of 1.9 or to 2 meters, it would have been a completely different number. So don't think 1.96 is like the universal, you know, energy constant. Okay? No. It's not. It just happens to be with this one. Now, so I drop it, and what's going to happen to the amount of kinetic energy in the system? It's going to increase, right? Now, let's, let's, let's look at the other extreme. Let's look at the point when it just lands. When it just lands. How much AUG do I have when it lands? Zero. Zero. So how much kinetic energy do I have to have? 1.96 joules, because I still have to have 1.96 joules of energy. Yes, Kyle? So, like, um, it gradually uh, changes over, right? the, the potential and the kinetic. Yeah, it is just, cool. we snap our fingers and, yeah. Okay. Okay? And we'll talk about what happens in the middle. Now, do I have enough information just from the energy standpoint to figure out the velocity of Gary at the point of impact. Yes. Emma, what could I do? 
Um, do you find what is kinetic energy equal? Fast times velocity squared. And there's a one half. One half. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's, that's kind of a big deal. Okay. I forgot about it until like the last problem. And then I had to fix it. Okay. So, <laughs> kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Yes. I, so I know I've got 1.96 joules. I know the mass. The only thing I don't know is velocity. velocity. So Emma, what does that look like? Solve for velocity. I hate fractions. Q K Beautiful. Okay? My velocity. Grand. Okay? So in this case, I'm going to take 2 times 1.96 joules and divide that by 0.1 kilograms. Okay? If you go through this, you're going to end up with meters per second. So somebody do the math. That's a, that's a zero, by the way. So it's kind of the square root six something. 6.26. 6.26 meters per second. Okay? Now, if you went old school, if you went old school and you say, okay, hey, I don't like this energy thing. I'm old school. I really like acceleration equations. Okay, groovy. So if I hold this up and I just drop it, Let's go old school. No, let's say the only thing we know is acceleration equations. So what's the only thing that you can do? Well, you got v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax, right? So let's just forget all about energy. So let's just go with this. What's my initial velocity? Zero. Yeah. Zero. Okay. So that's the square root of 2 times g times 2 meters. And I promise you, you're going to get... 6.26 meters per second. Okay. So all I'm doing with the energy is just giving you a different way to view this problem. So if you go with the straight acceleration, you don't need the mass. It's just v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax. But if you go with the energy standpoint, you're still going to get the exact same answer. Now, what would happen to this calculation if I had used Hank instead of Gary, what would have happened to this potential energy? Would it be the same or less if I lift Hank up to a height of two meters? It would be much higher. So I'm going to have a lot more kinetic energy here at that point when it lands. But I'm also going to have a much larger mass so I'm going to end up with the exact same velocity. Okay. So again, if you look at this, mass isn't a factor here. This doesn't make any difference if it's Gary or Hank. It doesn't matter. Mass isn't a factor. Mass is a factor here, but it's, all, but it's a factor in the kinetic energy calculation, and it's a factor down here. So if you look at this and go, okay, well, if you just look in terms of variables, this is 2 times 1 half mv squared, right, divided by the mass. <coughs> so basically, your mass is cancel out, okay? So you end up with pretty much the exact same idea, and that's why the masses drop out. Okay, got that. Now, let's say I want to look at what's going to happen when Gary crosses the one meter mark. Okay? When he crosses the one meter mark. Trout, when he crosses the one meter mark, <laughs> what's Gary going to have in terms of energy? And? Yeah. So, when he's at the halfway mark, which of those can I easily calculate if he's at the halfway mark? Is it going to be easy for me to calculate kinetic energy or my UG? Which one's going to be easier to calculate? I know, no, no, that's not the point. 
Right? All I'm asking, it is, but that's not the point. When I cross the one meter mark, okay, what's going to be easier to calculate, my UG or my kinetic energy at the one meter mark? Yes, because what's the only <laughs> thing that you'd have to know to do this? UG, right? It's just MGH. I gave you the height. There's nothing to find. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> and what is the rest of that? <laughs> there. Is that good? It's okay. I like that. Nice little That G does not have a closed circle. Yeah, that was like a that was a pretty explicit. Oh no, G at least has he's a looking for the laser gun tool. And also, you. <laughs> what's that, what's that yeah. letter right next to the U? What's that? Uh, I can't oh. find it. Yeah. He's like, there's like, like a No, no, that's the graph, Kyle. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that's a picture of where the golf ball is. Yeah, that's where the golf ball is. So, in this case, using <laughs> HGH, I've got 0.1 times 9.8 times the height of one meter. I get 0.98 joules. So if I have 0.98 joules of UG, that means I have to have, as Mr. Trot said, 0.98 joules of kinetic energy. So if it's, if it's a halfway point, one then you just divide it by two. Well, what if it's like, and like thing 0.25? Like so if we follow your thought process, Mr. Trout, Let's go with what you're laying out. So when it landed, it was going to be traveling 6.26 meters per second. So I want the velocity when it crosses the one meter mark. So since I split my energy in half of 0.98 to 0.98, then it's my velocity half as well and going to be 3.13. You're all about splitting this thing into easy halves. Because that's the... They're because they have to be. Um, She's talking about energy. Yeah, not necessarily the velocity, because velocity. velocity is squared in the kinetic energy equation. So, so okay. let me ask you this, Cap Captain, their Astro. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my question: Is the velocity when it crosses the one meter mark, and we're going to use three point one three as the benchmark, okay? <laughs> So when it crosses the one meter mark, is my velocity going to be greater than 3.13, like maybe 4 or 5? Or is it going to be less than 3.13, like maybe 2.5, something like that? It's going to be less. So you're, you're going to say something maybe around 2 meters per second. Sure. How many agree with fish? One, two. <laughs> How many think it's just going to be exactly half of 3.13? Jake is categorically shaking his head no. Phil, 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 Phil and Kyle, feel free to play along. So, how many think it's going to be greater than? Okay. Do you need to read? What? I realize voter apathy. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Two of 12 of you voted. <laughs> One six. Hey, what if Kyle and Phil voted? What would you say? Okay, <laughs> don't care. Yeah, no, in the future they voted. So. I'm sure they did vote. Yeah, I'm sure they did vote. They're, they're, they're did voting vote. right now, yeah. guys. Okay. In the future. Yeah, in the future. Right now. So, let's settle. Let's settle this. So, do I know my kinetic energy? Yes. 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 And I know my kinetic energy, as Emma so blissfully stated, can be solved for velocity by taking V equals the square root of 2K, 2K over M. Right? So we know Gary's kinetic energy is 0.98. True? So we can sit here and go, okay, we're going to take the square root of 2 times 0.98 joules, divide that by 0 0.10 kilograms. 
So what'd you get? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Why not? I want to talk about it. <laughs> 4.4. Wow. Exactly? 4.43. 4.43 meters per second. How? How does that make any sense? <laughs> oh, wait. Physics is broken. Uh, no. Yeah, physics is not broken. broken. <laughs> <laughs> no. So if it gets faster, it does more, less time. It does less time. <laughs> but this isn't prison. <laughs> I, say, I actually say it does more. Physics is prison. The amount of speed kind of is. <laughs> yep. Well, are prisons just physics? Everything is. <laughs> they should be. <laughs> what? Yeah, I should. Yeah. <laughs> when I retire, I'm going to go to prison and start teaching physics. <laughs> then we'll all start now, if y'all want to break <laughs> out of here, <laughs> let's look at how much potential energy you're going to have to have to clear the wall. Can you just tell them what the potential energy is to like, escape the gravitational pull of the earth and then be gone? Okay. I can do that. So, <laughs> I just got to jump really high. <laughs> all right. This many. Sam, so what was your justification for this being so much more than 3.13? Well, as it speeds up, since acceleration is an increase in velocity per time, yes. as it speeds up, it's going to take less time to cross the same distance. So it's okay. not going to accelerate as much. Beautiful. So you're starting at zero, then it's going to fall meter. one meter, right? And then it's going to fall two meters. It will, it's going to take a lot longer to travel the first meter than it is the second meter. At least I was half right. I did. Which half were you right on? <laughs> I can divide it in half. I can say you can split it in half. half. I I can say you can so it like yes or no. That was one of the answers. Okay, but that really wasn't. <laughs> yeah, you were right, but then with this one, no. Okay. <laughs> no, I know. That's what I said. Because you want that in five hundred? <laughs> I'll give you that, Captain Astro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to take longer to get here. It's a linear increase as a function of time. Boom, there you go. So, when it hits, boom, we can do everything with this. It's all kinetic. You can take any point in between. There you go. Okay? Got it? Fantastic. Okay. So, what if you were to reverse the process? And we're going to throw Gary up in the air. So if I throw Gary up in the air, when it leaves my hand, what's the only form of energy that he has? Kinetic. Just at that very instant when it leaves my hand. Kinetic. Yeah. So then over here, you're going to reverse the process and go, okay, I've got kinetic energy, I've got UG, and I've got the sum. That was a whole sign. That is not a sigma. Okay, so when I throw Gary up in the air, assuming that it's going to come back to the same point that he was landed, so the only type of energy here I have is kinetic, so that's going to be some number, that's going to be zero, so the sum has to be the number. So at any point as you go up, these two numbers, kinetic energy and UG, have to add up to whatever that number is. So. When he's at, if I, let's say for example, I give Gary, I don't know, two joules of energy when I throw him. Well, how much potential energy is Gary going to have at the top? Two joules, because all of that kinetic energy is going to be converted into potential energy. So at the top, that's going to be two joules. And any point in between is still going to add up to two joules. So if, if you know the point at anything, you can do the same. Now, this is where it gets complicated. Now I'm going to stand on top of a cliff, okay? And I'm going to throw Gary down, okay? So instead of just dropping Gary, I'm going to throw Gary down, okay? Gary, sorry, bad day. Boom. So, if I throw him, huh? Gary, he has feelings too. He's a ball. 
And it's, and it's only just a practice ball, too. It isn't like it's a real golf ball. Wow, it's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks even. Wow. Yeah, so we're, we're only going to spell Gary now with lowercase g. <laughs> <laughs> Gary doesn't even get uppercase g. <laughs> but Hank does. Gary's. That's Hank. Hank is a legend. Hank is a legend. Hank is a legend. But that's a bowling ball with a deal stuck in it. I mean, he took one for the team. It's also a great Yeah, but you're, so the, you're the one who's throwing Gary around like it's a... Well, I'm not going to throw Hank around. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Because he's too precious. <laughs> Throw it at Chloe. Okay. Hank already <laughs> Do it! It's engraved in him. Hashtag ball lives <laughs> matter. <laughs> Hashtag... <laughs> Maybe Hank needs his own Twitter account. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay, good. I caught it. Good. Grand. Okay. Grand. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about this. So here's UG. Here's kinetic energy. So before we just always talked about dropping gear. We throw it. So if I throw him down, does it, whether I drop Gary or throw Gary, does that alter the UG? No, because that's still going to be MGH. But now, not only does he have UG, then he also has kinetic energy. So let's say... So this is like when he's in your hand. That's two joules. Yeah, this distance leaves my hand. Let's say that I throw him with one joule of kinetic energy. Okay? So I'm throwing it down. So now the total amount of energy now is going to be three joules. So it's the same idea. Now, here's where kind of the magic happens. So if you look at this, you still start off, I've got kinetic energy at the top, and now I have potential energy to go with it. But at the bottom, those two values together are only going to add up to what? Well, but, but generally, just beyond three, but generally, what's it going to add up to? The new kinetic energy. Yeah, so this is going to be my new KT prime. Okay? Now, what do you need to calculate the initial kinetic energy? Do not make this difference. Uh, Mass and velocity. One half mv squared? Uh, one half m v naught squared, perhaps? Wow. Perhaps. 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 And this is going to be MGH? Perhaps. And this is going to be 1 half M? V squared? Perhaps. So, what can I get rid of? Mass. Yeah. Say Emma or mass? Emma. Emma. Get rid of Emma. No, no, you probably don't want to stay. Okay? Out of this prison. <laughs> <laughs> Take me with you. <laughs> Don't leave me. Okay? Well, I wrote the physics earlier, I didn't know. I know. But now, I hate fractions, so what can I do? Multiply by two. two. Multiply by oh, two. Oh, I get v squared Six. equals Three. v squared plus 2gh Three. equals. Oh! V squared. Oh my god! Otherwise, v squared. It all makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's a revelation. Let's go. <laughs> I want to take the call. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's our fun. Oh, fine. <laughs> Thanks for your loyalty. I can sign the pass out of school. He can't. That's true. Okay. So basically, that equation comes from. Yeah. Kinetic energy and potential energy. That's, That's why right. I said for now, just accept it. Eventually, we'll see where it comes from. Did you say that? Yes, I did. Yes, I was waiting for this day. I, yeah. I didn't so this it sure looks like from. you said that. Are we going to change his name, or is it still just that? Still so mad. Well, it's whatever works. Wait, so who first came up with the name? That guy. Equation? 
Uh, Nettie. That guy. Nettie. That guy. Uh, that guy. Conundrum of some. Yeah, he's at KU guy. studying chemical engineering right now. That so he just named it that equation. That guy. And it just always stuck. Well, how so, long ago was that? Three, four years ago. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I, I, it was his birthday the other day, actually. Anyway, so, anyway, <laughs> so. I bet you don't know when any of our birthdays are. You're right, I just have to say. I told Facebook. you when my birthday Hers was. Hers was like the third. Hers was like the Mine was like You forgot yeah. Manny's already, wow. <laughs> it's it's okay. Okay. Same difference. I barely remember my own birthday. birthday. John's is the 15th. Yours was in September, wasn't it? Good thing. Yeah. September 16th. Can we make a birthday calendar? Can we make a lot of it? We're probably <laughs> <laughs> a birthday calendar. Carla can't even remember our names. Carla <laughs> <laughs> literally doesn't know my name, so it's fine. You would have make that a law. Hey, Stephanie. <laughs> so, like, what are you going to do? Send me to prison if I don't? You're already in prison. Stephanie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know where you fall. I go to school I only know every day. She's terrible. <laughs> I don't know where you <laughs> okay. So, when you get to, let me explain what this note is at the bottom. When you get to number 18, this is out of the book. This is like what we did yesterday with Hank. So, when we lifted him up to find this height, okay, there's this handy dandy little equation that H equals the this L is the length of the pendulum. So you don't need the arc length, you need that particular height. So they're going to give you the angle, and it's this H equals uh, L minus L cosine theta. So it's on your sheet. So you just work out to be meters, because this is in meters, and that's meters, and we're subtracting them. So they're going to give you this angle, they're going to give you the length. This is what you have to figure out how high that's going to lift. So here's what you have to realize. And this is what we talked about yesterday. Whether I drop Hank straight down or I let him swing to the bottom, no matter what, that path is independent. So because it's all potential energy here, it's all kinetic energy there. Whether I just have him here and he falls straight down or he swings in an arc, it doesn't make any difference. He's going to end up with that same amount of kinetic energy. It's like, you know, if you want to go from here to Chicago, you can fly from here to St. Louis, St. Louis to Chicago, you can drive, it doesn't make any difference. You're still going to get to Chicago, okay? So the same thing's going to happen here. So that's what that equation is there for, because it tells you that's what you're going to use to figure out how high that tension is about lifting. So other than that, I'm done.